Chapter 4, Mishnah 9. The final Mishnah of this chapter is a continuation of the previous one. It begins by listing items that are not included in the standard sale of a field. But someone who is selling a field has not sold the detached stones in the field that are not reserved for its use, even though they can be used in the field. Since they have not been set aside for this use, they still may be removed from the field, and therefore they are not included in the sale. Nor has, this, nor has he sold the reeds in the vineyard that are not reserved for its use, although the reeds may be used to support the vines, since they have not been set aside for this use, they are not deemed part of the vineyard. Nor has he sold the grain that is detached from the field, even though people would often leave harvested grain spread out in the field to dry. Once the grain is cut, it is no longer considered part of the field, and it is therefore not, and it is therefore not included in the sale. However, sometimes these three items are included in the sale. But if the seller said to the buyer, I am selling you the field and everything that is inside it, then all of these items are sold with the field. This clause includes movable items with some connection to the field, which would have otherwise been excluded from the sale. The mission now lists seven items that are not included in the sale, even if the seller added the extra clause and everything that is inside it. The first four items are similar to items listed in the previous mission that are included even in, in even a standard sale. But these four items are not included even in the more inclusive sale because they are important due to their greater size or age. Whether this way or that way, that is whether the seller included the clause and everything that is inside it or not. He has not sold the thicket of reeds within the field that is larger than a base row in area. Nor has he sold the watchman's hut that is plastered with clay nor has he sold the carob tree that has already been grafted, nor the mature sycamore tree that has already been pruned. These items are all significant enough to be considered separate properties with their own identity, and they are not included in the sale of the field. The mission now lists three other items that are also not included in the sale of a field because they have the status of separate properties due to their importance. And he has not sold the pit, the wine press, or the dove coat that is located within the field, whether they are not currently in use or they are being used. Even if they are currently abandoned, these items are still important enough to be considered separate from the field and are not included in the sale. The mission now revisits an issue that was raised in Mishnah 2 of this chapter regarding the sale of a house. When the seller sells his field and retains the right to something within the field, such as a mature carob tree or a pit, he needs to be, given, he needs to be able to get to his property. The Mishnah cites a dispute, which was also cited above in Mishnah 2, concerning whether he needs to buy a path from the new owner of the field and the seller must buy himself a path to get to his property. These are the words of Rabbi Akiva. According to Rabbi Akiva, a seller sells with a generous eye, and he sold his right to access the pit or tree, so he has to buy that right back. But the sages say he does not need to purchase a path for himself. According to the sages, a seller sells with a stingy eye. Since he knew that he was keeping the tree or pit and would need a path to it, he kept the right to access it and did not include it in the sale. When the contract contains a certain clause, however, there is no dispute. But Rabbi Akiva agrees that if the seller wrote in the bill of sale, I am selling you the field except for these items, specifically excluding from the sale the tree or pit that would not have been included anyway, that he does not have to purchase a path for himself. Since he wrote an unnecessary clause, unnecessary clause we say that he meant to exclude from the sale the path that he now needs. Since the dispute between Rabbi Akiva and the sages resolves around whether a seller had in mind to sell generously or stingily, in the opposite case, where the seller is selling the pit or tree and keeping the field, their views regarding whether the buyer of the pit needs to buy a path will be reversed. If he sold one of these items, a pit or tree, to another and retained the field for himself, Rabbi Akiva says the buyer does not need to buy a path to the tree because the seller sold the tree generously and the path to access it is included in the sale. But the sages say that he must buy a path to the tree because the seller of the tree stole sin, sold stingily and did not include a path to, in the sale. All of the rulings in this chapter regarding what is and what is not included in the sale of various properties, as well as the dispute between Rabbi Akiva and the sages, apply only to sales. When one acquires property in a different way, however, these rules are different. When were these words stated regarding someone who sells a property? But someone who is giving a gift gives all of these items as part of, of the gift. Someone who gives a field as a gift includes everything in the gift, even important items such as large thickets of reeds or mature sycamore trees. Similarly, if brothers divide an inherited estate, 
When they acquire a field as part of their share, they acquire all of these along with the field. Likewise, if someone acquires the ownerless property of a convert who died without any heirs, once he acquires the field, he acquires all of these items along with it. Also, if someone consecrates a field, he has consecrated all of these items along with the field itself. The Mishnah cites Atano who disputes this final ruling. Rabbi Shimon says, someone who consecrates a field to the temple has not consecrated any items that would not be included in the sale of the field, except for the grafted carob tree and the mature sycamore tree. According to Rabbi Shimon, the mindset of one who consecrates a field is similar to the mindset of one who sells it. And Rabbi Shimon holds like the sages, that a seller sells with a stingy eye. The one difference between a sale and consecration is that if one consecrates a field, all the trees that are growing on the field are consecrated, even important trees that would not be included in the sale, because they are deriving nourishment from the field that is now consecrated.